My name is Jeff H. Seip from practiceinterviews.com. We have a ton of free resources and a ton of services to check out. Check out our website. In today's video, we are going to cover the question of what do you do when someone's being left out? This question has been showing up a ton in the Googliness and leadership interviews at Google. And what's the purpose of this question? It's an inclusivity question. Google and really any organization they know to be great, they have to create an inclusive environment. And that is specifically the reason why this question is being asked. We're gonna go through the steps and then we'll do a sample answer at the end. So hang out with us. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Item one, the CFS method. This is a problem solving question. And what that means is that they don't want an example. They wanna see how you problem solve it and how you think through it. So the CFS method, what does that mean specifically? Clarify framework solution. When we clarify, we ask clarifying questions just to make sure the question is very clear. We present a framework, which is some high level concepts that really allow us to get focused in on our answer. And then in the solution, we dive deep. We really, really get into the weeds of what's needed. If you're unfamiliar with the CFS method at all, I pinned a video up above so you can check it out. So let's dive in. Item two, clarify. We need to understand the context. And for the sake of this example, we'll just have the person being left out. We'll call them Bob. So first category is gonna be new versus existing. Has Bob always been left out or is this new? Is Bob new to the team? new to the organization, new to the project, program, initiative, or just trying to find out that foundational information. Then the relationship. Is Bob internal or external to the organization? What's my personal relationship with Bob? And is Bob a peer? Maybe Bob's a direct report. Is Bob in leadership? Uh, just a few questions. And maybe even is Bob part of the, just the overall program or project team? How long have I been working with Bob? One week, months, years? And do I personally have a good relationship with Bob? Yes or no. And we're trying to figure that out personally, professionally, etc. The journey questions. So these are kind of close to the new versus existing and relationship questions, but I'd like to break out the journey questions a little bit because they're a little bit more nuanced, such as, has Bob demonstrated a recent behavior shift or is it always like Bob has been left out? Um, have conversations occurred with Bob in the past about him being left out, either with me directly on this concept or with other team members, project members, etc.? Impact questions are always also always important. So we want to just be thinking about Bob and having sensitivity to Bob and how is this impacting Bob? But also additionally, how is this impacting the entire team? Is this impacting timelines, deadlines, deliverables? And there's many other questions you can consider. The one other question that's kind of interesting that you might want to ask in this one is, is this during COVID? I mean, we're living during an edge case. And so asking the COVID question, because the way you're going to interact and engage with Bob, if we're saying, hey, it's current landscape, is gonna be a little bit different than if it were face-to-face. -face. Item three is the framework, a number of different concepts to uncover and think about in this potential scenario. I want you to think of using a more collaborative framework. What does that mean? Just be using collaborative terms and concepts. So a few that I thought through were just overall communication. What does that meeting cadence look like? You're going to want to be talking about listening, questioning, empathy, trust, uh, absolutely what's the kind of input coming in, creating a psychological safety, thinking about an action plan, thinking about how Bob is resourced, etc. Those are some high level concepts, but really think collaboration and much like clarifying questions, there's a ton. So you'll want to narrow it down a little bit when you answer the question. Item four, the solution. This solution, the most critical item when you think about this specific solution is you want to put me in the room. And so what do I mean by that comment? I really want your interviewer to visualize your dialogue. Now, this could be just specifically with Bob. 
This could be with how you interact with others to create a great path for Bob, but the visual is going to be critical. And so just continue to ask yourself, Am I putting my interviewer in the room? Am I really allowing them to see how I work? Because that will work for any solution of any open-ended question, especially these very interactive ones. Okay, item five, the sample answer. For the sake of this sample answer, we are going to imagine that our fake interviewer is Sue. It's always Sue. Uh, I'm gonna include some flow and some natural pauses just to kind of give you the idea and feel of how it should go. And I just want to assume for the sake of argument that Sue does not answer any of our questions. And this is how I always want you to prepare. Just don't assume that they're always going to give you data. A lot of times they're not going to. So for flow, I'll set up, I'll set the stage. I'll have Sue ask me the question, and then I'll dive in. So Jeff, what do you do when someone's being left out? Sue, my first question is trying to understand the time landscape. I just want to understand, are we imagining that this is happening now when we're living in basically COVID times or would this be normal times when I could potentially meet with this person face to face? Okay, so let's say for the sake of argument, let's call this person Bob. And a few questions that I would have about Bob is, has Bob historically always been left out or is this a newer trend or pattern? Um, I'd want to understand Bob and understanding if he's newer to the team, the organization, the project or initiative. I'd want to understand a little bit more about my relationship with Bob. Is he internal or external? Um, is he a peer, a direct report? Have I been working with Bob for a long time, a short period of time? And then lastly, I would just want to understand the overall impact. Does this seem to be strongly impacting Bob? the overall team, the project, or maybe all three items. Sue, it's a lot of questions. I just want to see if you can answer any of those questions for me. Okay, Sue, let's consider just a few items. Uh, I definitely want to focus in on communication. Within that communication, obviously, it's going to be critical to do some serious listening, some questioning. I always want to come in with the lens of having empathy and trust. I want to create that psychological safety environment for Bob, and then I would want to have an action plan. I think all of those are important items that we could focus in on, but why don't we start with communication? Does that work for you? Okay, my first step is going to be to communicate with the team members, focusing on two specific items. I just want to get their perspective, feedback, and any missing data. There might be absolutely data that's just missing that I don't have. And then secondarily, I just wanna kind of set the stage and say, hey, I'd love confidentiality in this matter and I'd love to take the lead on it. So I'm getting people's permission to kind of move forward and take this action plan on with Bob. Next, really casual ping to Bob. Hey Bob, just wanna have an informal meeting. I'm gonna throw something on your calendar just to kind of maybe remove some of the anxiety that Bob might be having about a meeting with me and really just kind of emphasizing, hey, informal conversation. And ideally I'd meet with Bob face to face if it's the current edge case of COVID via video and cameras have to be on. And I'd start with the warm and fuzzies. Just ask Bob how his week was going, if he had any fun plans for the weekend, et cetera. Then I would shift to what's going on at work, just trying to figure out the resourcing piece, the overall general landscape. Is Bob crushed with work? Is he having any challenges with his current projects, initiatives? And does he feel as though the team is supporting him and allowing him to be successful? And then at some point after these questions, Sue, I would have to shift the conversation and with utilizing data that Bob's provided me, but it would sound something like, Bob, with your permission, I'd like to discuss something that might help the success of the relationship, the project, initiative, etc. Then say something like, Bob, it seems like you're being left out and inclusivity is critical for all of our success. Are there any resources that I can provide for you? Is there anything I can do for you that will help me create a better environment for you? And then lastly, if Bob was open to it, ideally create a strong action plan for him to move things forward. Sue, I think that this is a good place for me to pause. Uh, we could definitely dive into some of the additional questions that I might ask Bob. 
we could absolutely talk about that action plan and or something else that would be interesting would be the communication plan with the other team members. Would you like me to cover any of those items? Ideally, this would be one of a few solutions that you would introduce to your interviewer, Sue, absolutely talking about how you get into the weeds of an action plan, a follow-up plan, how you communicate and create that continued loop of psychological safety with other team members when talking about Bob and kind of getting his permission to do so, etc. cetera. Um, but this is a question where you can, you can really dive in as long as you're putting me in the room, you're going to have great success with this question and really, really focus in on Bob and some of these very, very important soft skills like the empathy, trust, psychological safety, etc. To sum up, you got to expect inclusivity questions. They're just going to come up and we all know inclusivity is critical to an organization's success. So really think about your soft skills, your people skills, and you'll do great with these types of questions. I hope this video helps. Thanks.